Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Hummel. It's the tier 6 German SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Prokhorovka Encounter and it's under the command of Angelina75. And yes, this is another contest for the Weekend Lion. Well, you may have noticed we've got tracks moving on this vehicle, but we've got no engine sound. Unfortunately, if I try and restart it to get the engine sounds, we lose the tracks. Yes, Wargaming has screwed up yet another client. Yes, how inventive of you, Wargaming. You want to really make the game disinteresting to people and they can't play their replays. That's the way to do it. Anyway, Angelina's aiming her 15cm howitzer downrange. She's got 480 alpha on this gun, 38mm pen. She's going for a shift and four rounds out. Narrowly misses him, but she does get some stun assist off him. One enemy tank went into the cap. It was a T-52, but he's left the cap and headed south. Oh, look at this. Four enemy tanks together. She's dialing in on a Jagdpanzer Fier. Rounds out. Oh, that was a direct hit. We lost sight of him, but he definitely took the hit. And so, yeah, he's going to be hurting right now. Now, the standard reload is 25.31 seconds. Angelina's got something just over 20 seconds, I think, off her reload. We're using a Virgin client at the moment. Rounds out the KV-85. He dodged. The moment he noticed the shell was headed his way, he changed course and managed to avoid the shell. Okay, Angelina's extending her aim. Going after a T-150 or... No, she's going to go after the KV-85 again. She's dialing in. And just as she fires, he backs away. And yet again, gets warning that the shell's inbound. Or she gets a bit of stun. And a critical hit, I think. Okay, she's extending her game again. She's scrolling out each time she's doing it. If you hold down the left control key... Put the mini mouse, uh, the mouse, the mouse, the mouse cursor over the mini map, and then you can right click on it. That will take you to the spot straight away. She hit the 150 for 172 hit points, and then got 10 hit points of stun assist afterwards. Trying to get a shot in this VK3601H. Oh, he stopped backing up the moment he fired, and unfortunately, that one wasn't a hit. But she did try to get close. And now she's got two heavies to fire at. A VK-3001P has turned up. Uh, but she's still firing at the VK-3601H. Rounds out. Direct hit this time for 154. And she gets some stun assist as well. Uh, she's changing position after each shot to make sure she can't be counter The enemy... The enemy RTs are an M44 and an AMX 13 F3AM. Okay, AMD 178B. She's loaded. She's just trying to work out where he's going. That was a good guess. Unfortunately, he dodges the shot as well the moment it's fired. She's gone back to the cap because there's still that KV-85 in there. She's marked him as target, letting her teammates know. Well, one of them's just reset him by getting a shell in. Angelina fires the shell in, and she hit his rear for 122. He's not going to last very long in the cap. He keeps getting hit. Angelina's reloading as fast as she can to try and get another kill. To try and get a kill, rather, because she hasn't got one at all yet. Rounds out. Yeah, that's a kill. Now, back to the VK-301P. Quickly changes position. She's got plenty of time. She can just move a few yards. That's all that's needed. And now she's dialing in on the VK-301P. There he is. She adjusts the aim. Rounds out. Looks like an accurate one. It lands right behind the VK. Unfortunately, she didn't get any hit points off that. That was very unfortunate. R RNG said no. But she's still going after the same target. And maybe this time she will get a hit. Okay, she's loaded. Rounds out. 
Well, that one appeared to hit the turret. It may even have hit the cupola. I can see a little yellow mark on the uh, turret just when the shell went in. Okay, go back to the VK301B and another hit, 152. She's certainly putting out the shells as quickly as she can to rack up as much damage as possible. Oh, that's a nice target, the Achilles, which is basically an M10 with a 17-pounder gun, the British version of the M10. Much more capable than the uh, M10. She gets a splash on him. And that Achilles is off. <laughs> oh, what's happening here? The VK is running for the edge of the cliff. <laughs> I thought for a second he was trying to do some skydiving. Well, he did get stunned. And from being in that position, I don't think there's much chance he's going to be able to do much. Now, because of course he's going to get multiple shots on him from our teammates. Yep. So, he's gone. And now there's... Oh, the Achilles has come up onto the railway line. That's a very silly thing to do. And, uh, oh, he just got taken out by our Dickamax, who goes by the name of Hambone McSpanky. That's quite a name. Okay, over the side of the map, we've got a T-78. Oh, he just got tracked. We're lining up. He uses his repair kit straight away. Angelina was lining up a shot but he gets killed before she can shoot. Over on this side of the map, she's trying to dial in on a Crusader, but he's moving fairly quickly. No, I don't think that was enough lead, but it was, uh, it was in the right place, you could say, um, or in the right intentions. Well, she's having to move forward now because most of the enemy have uh, gone to the back of the map, or at least uh, that's where she's going to find them. There's only four enemies left, two Arties. That Crusader and a Skoda T25. And the closer she gets to the center of the map, the more likely she's going to find that she'll be able to hit one of those enemies. Okay, she's gone to the center. There's the first one. The Skoda's on the railway line. The Amex 13 F3 is making a run up the center of the map. She's dialing in on the Skoda. Rounds out. Yep, all she gets was some stun, but she did, did get some stun assist. And there's the Amex 13 F3. He's just driving straight up the middle of the map, trying to get away from our teammates who are coming in from both sides. And the Dickamax is chasing him, you could say. And Janina's lining up a shot. Rounds out. Oh, excellent. She got a second kill there. And there's the last. There's the last enemy. It's an M44. And he gets killed before Angelina can get a shot off. So, it's a victory. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the second class tanker for Angelina 75 in the Hummel. She managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, she managed to get eight. And she got a confederate because she hit more of the enemy than anyone else on her team. A uh, win eight, and that one was 2,299, which is very good indeed, and just short of getting Unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, she didn't get the highest damage in the game, because that went to the Dickamax with the unusual name, Hambo McSpanky, and he managed to get 1,762 hit points, but he didn't get a high caliber. Instead, he actually ended up with a tank sniper, uh, so that wasn't 20% of the enemy hit pool. The next highest scorer was the KV-1S with 1,582. And the third highest scorer was the Skoda T-25 with 1,494. And Angelina got her confederate for 1,207 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, she was in joint second place because the Dickamax managed three kills. Angelina got two. So did the Skoda T-25 and the M44 and her team, who was uh, opportunistically kill-stealing in some of the shots. Uh, I think Angelina would have got those kills otherwise. And on the enemy team, their Achilles also got two kills. And when it came to base XP, it was the Skodas who were up front with one and two. The Dickamax managed third place, the T-78 fourth place, and Angelina got fifth place.
with 715. She fired 18 shots in that game, got 7 direct hits on the enemy, no penetrations for 18 splash. Damage of 1,207 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. She damaged 9 of the enemy, killed 2, so there's a 7 difference, and that's where she picked up the Confederate. 705 hit points of stun assist of 15 stuns, and she got 6 defense points when she reset the cap. Unfortunately, that probably would have been more, but for the fact that her team were very keen to shoot anyone who's in the cap, I think they might have been after a defender medal. She earned 24,860 credits for the game, and after ammunition resupply, still took away a profit of 15,770 credits, 715 base experience points for this game, and times three for the first victory, took away 2,145 experience points altogether, but she did get a bonus of 1,750 free XP because she completed a mission. So, great first game for Angelina. She's back and she's in the lead with the new computer. Um, let's see how Talon gets on in his first game. The second replay is on the Lakeville map and we're on the South Spawn with Talon. Time to roll out. Well, you can hear there's no engine noises. Yes, we either get the tracks moving so you can actually see the vehicle moving about, but if we try to reset and get the sound we get the sound but we don't get the tracks moving yes well done wargaming <laughs> you really have screwed up this client well anyway he's got 155 millimeter howitzer and he's aiming down the valley towards the enemy if i remember correctly it's 630 alpha check that there we go 39 millimeters of penetration, 7.6 meters of blast radius, and a stun duration of between 11 or 22 seconds. Aiming for a super hellcat, rounds out. Direct hit, 528, and that I think was a low roll penetration, and the super hellcat got taken out immediately afterwards. So uh, we know that Talon picked up the stun assist off that one for sure. Now, Talon decided to pick the AMX-13 F3, I think because Angelina was using it, and she was getting good results. So he decided to switch around. And uh, one of the reasons why he changed around as well, because I actually uh, also said that it might be better for him if he, uh, to get an ace tanker if he actually got better effects. And well, he just helped take out that Cromwell. In fact, the Cromwell was his kill so he's got another uh, a kill in this game 36 hit points is all he got but that's all the Cromwell had left to give he's now aiming for an m2 white in the town center dialing in rounds out nice hit right into his side 226 Now, it does have a slightly longer reload, this RT. It's normally 30.58 seconds, but uh, I think that he's managed to get it down a bit. So it's probably about 25 seconds or thereabouts. Can't tell you precisely at the moment because we're using a virgin client, or at least I think it's a virgin client, this one. Okay, the M2Y has gone back to that position again, and you know what happens if you keep making bad decisions and going back to the same position you end up getting hit again it's like albert einstein said uh, the uh, first sign of madness is uh, repeating the same mistake or making the same mistake and expecting a different result well he's now aiming down the valley for an ikb 65 2 and these things have fairly thin armor he's almost loaded rounds out oh that was a total wipeout there. Yes, he got the kill on the IKB. Second kill in the game. So he's selecting his targets well using the information that's given to him. You need to try and find thin-skinned vehicles to get penetrating shots on them. It was unfortunate the Super Hellcat was only 500 uh, odd hit points. But there again, the thing was that uh, uh, it was a low roll, but he was taken out. So he got the stun assist. There was loads of stun assists off the M2Y. Uh, so, yes, he's definitely picking up hit points there. 
Now he's making his way towards the town, I think mainly so he can get shots on some of those enemy tanks on the lake road. There's an AMX 1357 that's coming towards our Scorpion. And it looks like Talon's been spotted by one of them. It's probably that AMX 1357. Now he might get an RT round coming in his direction. No, he won't because uh, the enemy RT has been wiped out. But he can do some damage to that 1357. He's loaded. He's ready to go. He's just lining it up and dialing in. Lost sight of the guy for a second. Fires the round in. Oh my gum! He's got another kill, and I think that one hit the AMX 1357 in his turret bustle. It's where the magazine is, and the AMX 1357 blew up. Okay, we're waiting for the reload. The enemy Jackson's dead. In fact, there aren't many enemies left. There's just two heavies, the Black Prince and the Paul, Paul Lack Tank. They're both in the town center. He fires around in at the Black Prince, but it just splashes. And our team are capping. Now, they don't need to cap because there's only two enemies left. And we've still got nine tanks. But I guess that they just want this game to be over and done with quickly. Unfortunately, the Black Prince has moved behind those buildings. And from this point, we can't get a shot. That's why he's got the red line. He'd have to relocate if he's going to get another shot. And that's exactly what he's intending to do. And the team have capped out. So this game is over. It's a victory by cap. Here's the end of battle results for Talon. And I'm afraid, yes, he got a first class tanker out of this game. It's the first time he's had a first class tanker in the AMX 13 F3 AM. And that means he beats Angelina and gets the weekend lion. Yes, he also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He managed to get eight in this one, I think. And his win eight was 2,127, despite the fact that he actually got, uh, um, he didn't get a confederate. He still got a first class and Angelina only got a second class. And even though her win eight was higher uh, and his was slightly lower, Yes, the first class is where it counts. So he got the higher mastery badge and he wins the weekend lion. Let's have a look at the rest of the results. Well, he actually managed to get uh, fifth place on damage on his team, but there were two members of the enemy team who actually scored higher than him on damage, which means that uh, Talon was actually in seventh place on damage overall. The highest scorer was the IS, who managed 2,008 hit points. The second highest was the Jackson on the enemy team, 1,690. And the third highest place was, in fact, the uh, Scorpion, who managed 1,682. And Talon picked up 1,218 out of that game. I think the reason why was actually he was hitting tanks which were very thin-skinned and getting good results off them. He was getting kills. And that's why he's in second place on kills. The only managed four kills. Talon managed three. Two kills went to the SU-100 and the Black Prince on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, he was in second place again with um, 882. He was beaten by the only who got 920. Not that far ahead of him. And the IS with the big score managed to get 834. So he was in third place. Talon only fired seven rounds in the game, but he made them effective. Four were direct hits on the enemy, and three of them were penetrations. Yes, yeah, so he hit the right tanks in order to get the big bang. If we see here, we, we notice that he did penetrate the Super Hellcat. It was a low roll penetration for 528. He also penetrated the turret bustle of the AMX 1357, and that's what made him go bang. Uh, took him out altogether with that shot. And the third penetrating shot was actually on that IKB-65-2 for 276. It went straight through the front armor on that vehicle, which is fairly thin-skinned. Uh, 155 millimeter round hitting a thin skin armor. Yeah, I'm afraid that shell's going to wipe him out altogether. So look for thin skin vehicles if you want to get penetration shots, because they're the ones you should be aiming for. He also got four splashes on the enemy as well. 1,218 hit points of damage, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage six of the enemy, killed three, so there was no chance of getting a confederate because there was only a three difference there. 1,052 hit points of stun assist of four stuns, so a nice amount of stun assist. 
and I think that did help him to get the first place, or first class tanker rather. 41,082 credits from the game, 90,000 for completing a mission, 131,082 credits altogether, and he, that's the amount he took away because he didn't have to pay for shells, I think he probably had some spare, and uh, so a very effective battle in terms of credits, and uh, yes indeed, and it was all on a premium count. 1,323 XP times three for the first victory, 3,969 experience points altogether. He says he actually likes this tank now. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It is actually quite a good tank. If you use the stop gun, it's actually very fast as well. It accelerates quickly so you can get away from the enemy because it's got the same speed or similar speed to the AMX 1375. Uh, it's got 60 kilometers an hour top speed. So you can zoom about the battlefield at high speed getting to new positions, and it does shotgun fairly well as well. Um, although, uh, I, sh I should actually uh, point out that it's it's not quite as uh, good as, uh, say, the Burt or other tanks which actually have been uh, shotgunning in the past. Um, it's still very, very quick and um, can be a real terror on the enemy. Uh, I certainly do like this RT because of the 155 gives you a nice alpha of 630. And remember, that's at tier 6, whereas other tanks like the M44 have had their alpha nerfed by Wargaming. This one is not being nerfed that much. It, it was nerfed, but not by much. And therefore, you're still getting a fairly big bang for your buck, and you can make it count. So, uh, Talon takes the Weekend Lion last week. Uh, he, I think he enjoyed that. Uh, they've got a new computer now, so I think that Angelina and Talon will be supplying some fairly good replays from now on. And, of course, because Talon's now tried a different tank and it worked, I'm hoping he's going to try other tanks, other arties, uh, from different nations to see if he can get better results. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.